Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at an issue that comes up where we get crashes with HomeBridge. Uh, one of the things that can happen is when you add your Harmony accessories, there typically can be a crash that will happen every once in a while. And so when this happens, it's annoying. You can see here that even all of my Nest devices don't work because the Harmony hub is crashing HomeBridge itself. You can see all the no responses from my different sensors there. You can see there's all of my uh, different switches that I've got set up for the Harmony hub. So you can see that I've got, I've got a problem here because I can't make any of those changes and none of my automation will take place. If you look over here at the launch control uh, center over here, you can see that I've got an error that keeps coming up. And you can see it continually tries to relaunch the application. It gets it running for a second and then I get an error again. And so I keep getting this error that just keeps going uh, looping around and around because it keeps trying to restart but it's not having any success. So let me show you how to fix that. What we've got to do is I'm just going to come down here and pull up a Finder window here. And so let's just go into Finder. Let me just move this over here. Uh, what we need to do is go into the actual HomeBridge folder. Uh, this again is a hidden folder, so you want to make sure that your hidden files are showing. You want to go into Accessories, and you can see right here we've got this Cached Accessories folder right here. This particular uh, item here inside this folder is the issue. And so all I need to do is just come in here and I'm going to delete this. And so now that I've deleted it, it's gone. You can see nothing's in there. Now, you don't have to worry about that because it's going to actually remake that. You can see it's made it again. Now, all I have to do is wait for HomeBridge to pick up the change. And I should see that my devices are back on my iPhone in HomeKit. And so as you can see, now that it's created the new cached accessories uh, item in here, you can see that all of a sudden my thermostat is back. You can see that my different items are fine. That no response there is just from a bulb that I had connected and don't have running right now. But as you can see, everything else is up and running. And so now I can use it uh, with HomeKit and we're back in business. So I just wanted to show you that because I know a number of you may have had this issue and so I just wanted to make sure that you knew how to make the fix happen. Uh, there is a little bit of automation that could be set up too, probably to just uh, delete this when there is a problem. Now one of the ways that I've worked on this so that I can actually delete the file when I need it to just in case I'm away from my home or I'm not in front of my Mac when uh, Harmony crashes and I've got to fix uh, that actual file to get everything back up and running is I've set something up with Keyboard Maestro. Now Keyboard Maestro is a great application if you hadn't had a chance to use it. It's an application that allows you to set up various macros that will trigger uh, things automatically for you. And what's great about it is it has a Mac application and then also has an iOS application that serves as a remote control that will allow you to set up these different triggers. So what I've done is I've set up a remote trigger in Keyboard Maestro. And so let's go ahead and just edit this. You can see what I did. So I called it Restart Home Bridge. And then what I did was down here, I just selected the Delete uh, File uh, command. And so what I did then is browse to the actual file that I'm looking to delete, which is that uh, cached accessories file. Uh, that we have right here, if you can see that all the way through. So I just browse to it. And then I save that, and that becomes the actual trigger, so that when I run that, it's going to delete the file for me automatically. Now, in doing that, what I also have built into Keyboard Maestro, if you go to Preferences, is a web server. And you can enable this web server and set the port. You can do it for HTTP or HTTPS. You put in a username or password. And then you can choose what you want to do, whether you want web browser access to be enabled or not. And that's so you can see all of your things in a web browser. And I guess that would be another way to do it in case your phone isn't in front of you. Uh, you can do iOS access enabled, which is what I've done here because I'm using the iOS application. Uh, and then you can just say you can receive clipboards for clipboard history and that sort of thing. But you just want to make sure that this web server is running. Then you go over, let me just go ahead and close this. We go over to the Mac App Store, and in here you would then uh, download the Keyboard Maestro Control. Now I've already done that, so let's just go in here. The first thing you do is you'll hit the plus and you'll make a connection. Now what I've done is I've done a local connection to my server, and I've got a remote connection there. You can see my Mac server down at the bottom. So let's just take a look at the local connection. So I just tap on that inside my network. Once I tap on it, you can see that immediately I get the exact same folders over here on my iPhone so that I have access to those so that I can run them and make everything work. If I just tap back on connections again, 
and I come back into the Mac server, you can see here, this is where I would put the information for the host, the port, my username and password, any display name that I'm using, and then I can connect from there. And that's how I would actually set up a connection. And so in our case, because it was a local one, I put the actual local IP address of my server in there. And that's what made it work with the other one. So let me just tap back and let's tap back into this one here. So now that I've done that, if I tap into remote triggers, you see I've got this restart home bridge right here. And so let's go ahead and pull up our finder window and let's just lay that right here. And what I'll do is I'll tap the restart home bridge button. And so in doing that, you see that it has deleted the file. You can see that the file is no longer there anymore and it's deleted it for me. Now this file may not show up right away in here because Homebridge is already running. It hasn't uh, been crashing when I did it. Uh, but eventually over time it's going to create that file. But the way we can check that everything is running properly, we've got a couple of ways of doing that. Uh, the first is we can go to launch uh, control here and take a look at it. We see it's running with no errors. It's not crashing and restarting. The other thing we can do is come out of this application and go back into HomeKit. And you can see in HomeKit there, I've got everything running and looks like it's working fine. So that's how I've solved my problem with HomeBridge crashing on me. Again, this should work for most crashes, uh, but especially if you're using the Harmony plugin where this happens, uh, this will come up every once in a while. And when it does, it's really annoying. So this is how I've been able to figure out a workaround so that I can keep all my non-HomeKit devices running and working with HomeBridge. Uh, I'll probably do more screencasts on some of this HomeKit stuff and home automation as I'm starting to add more devices to my home and experimenting with some of the automation things. Uh, it's really been uh, a lot of fun, and so I'll share that with you as well and continue this series on so that you too can set up your own uh, HomeKit setup and use a lot of the other devices that are available that might not be HomeKit specific, but that you can integrate into your setup and your workflow for your home as well. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own Mac or software or need some troubleshooting help, feel free to contact me at todd at toddholtoff.com.